Hey guys, remember this? This is our band castrator. We used it a couple weeks ago to, uh, to take care of one small problem for one big bull. And today we're gonna take a look and see how he's doing as we do an update on castrating a 750 pound bull. <laughs> Well guys, we're back over here in the corral system. We're gonna be checking on old Lefty today. Lefty is a bull that actually snuck through this year and ended up in with the steers. We had to take care of that problem a little bit later than we normally would have. Usually we would castrate at branding and we do all of our castrations in uh, one of two ways here on the ranch. Uh, right now we're doing it with the band, with the big bander. This is just a rubber band that goes around the base of the scrotum that cuts off circulation to the testicles. Basically they just fall off over time. The other way to do it is by cutting open the scrotum and removing the testicle. Uh, with a bigger bull, that can be more problems uh, and, uh, and a lot more issues. So we decided to go with this direction uh, with this bull. So today we're gonna be bringing him back here into the chute, uh, where we're gonna take a look and see how things are going for him. Uh, there's definitely, a, we're not just doing this just for kicks and grins. There are reasons that we bring him back in and make sure, and one of those is to make sure that he doesn't have any open wounds that could be causing problems that we may have to get him some antibiotics for or something like that. Another thing we're going to do today is bring over Cole, who is our bottle calf, who was actually castrated back in the middle of June. We're going to check on him and see how he's doing. But not only that, we've got a brand new addition here to the AeroQuip Corral system that I want to show you um, that's going to help us out immensely as we move through, uh, well, moving cows. Now, it's not actually something that's going to help us with moving cows. I kind of misspoke because it's actually a scale which sits right down here. Um, I've had this scale for quite a few years and really never had uh, anywhere to put it. And then when we ended up changing over corral systems, I didn't, man I didn't know where to put it. I didn't know how to do it uh, or how to get it in. So I actually decided to leave it out. Now that we've been using the AeroQuip corral system for quite a while, I decided that the best place to put it was gonna be right here in our holding pen, which is this little section of alley right here that's behind the main chute, so this is kind of like a waiting area. Uh, we can bring a cow up or a, or a bull or a calf or whatever, and they can sit in this area while they're waiting to go back into the chute or into the chute uh, for the next part of their uh, procedure or, or whatever else we're doing. So this week, Ranch Hand Jeff and I took a good afternoon to figure out how to get this 6,000 pound scale in and underneath the alley. It was a little bit of a trick. We had to dig down quite a bit, slide it underneath, uh, give it a little bit of support. And if this works great, we may end up actually pouring some concrete in here um, in order to, to make this whole thing work just a little bit better. It's about 15 pounds off. Uh, and that's mostly because of the way that it sits in here. It's not quite level, um, but 15 pounds I can deal with. I can, I can do the math on that. So uh, we even, it's so new that I don't even have any place to mount the, uh, the control box or the, uh, the display box yet. Uh, I haven't decided where I'm gonna put it or how I'm gonna leave it in there. So um, basically it's gonna show us the weight of whatever animal is inside that pen at the time. And I thought it might be kind of fun to bring over Cole, who's our bottle calf, and uh, get a weight on him and see how much he's grown. Now we know he was about 70 pounds when he was born, but we haven't weighed him since. And he's a part of the tour every day. He hangs out here on the ranch. He's part of our lives. And also I want to take a look and see how well he's healing from his castration, which took place back in June. So we're going to head over and grab him and hopefully we can bring him over without any issues. Um, he's probably hungry. He hasn't had a bottle yet this morning. We're actually in the process of weaning him off. So uh, it might be uh, a little beneficial to just grab a bottle and see if we can lead him over with one of those. It's a beautiful day here on the ranch and thank you for coming and spending part of your time to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Be sure to subscribe and follow along. So this
This is my friend Cole. He's about three months old and uh, was castrated back in June, like I said. His mom had mastitis, so she wasn't able to feed him. So it became our job. And of course, he wants this bottle really, really bad, even though there's there's nothing in it. We're gonna trick him a little bit. And we're gonna lead him over to the corrals uh, using this bottle. Hey, Cole. Cole. Hey. Oh, hey, be careful. Cole is, Cole is a pretty big boy. He can push me around pretty good. So be a little careful as we walk over here. Come on. Don't bump in. Hey, you turd. Bit. Hey. All right, we're coming up here to the corral. I'm gonna get this thing open and get him in here. All right. Ooh. Okay, come over here. Let's go this way. No, be nice to me. Let's go see how much you weigh. Oh my gosh, you're just like a bull in a china shop. But you're not a bull, are you? Come on, kid. Come in here. There you go. All right. I gotta open some gates. I gotta open some gates. Move. <laughs> Come on, move your butt. Move. Come on. Move your butt. Get. Okay, now. Go in there. Come on. No. Oh, get in there. Come on. There we go. Good boy. Yeah. Who's a good boy? Okay, so we got him into the tub which is where all good things start to happen here he's going to go from the tub straight up the alley which the door is closed up there so he can't go anywhere right now so we've got to go set some gates obviously we want to get him in here and get a weight on him so we're going to open up that gate We're gonna come over here and open up this gate, which will allow him to just come right on up, roll through the corral. Good job, kiddo. Keep going. You can see his brand there healing up very nicely. It's been about a month since he was branded, banded. given a whole bunch of vaccinations. How you doing, kiddo? Good job. Hi, how are you? Hi. All right, so we're looking here at about 180 pounds. I said we were 15 pounds off, so I think we're probably looking closer to that 200 pound mark for him. And of course, it goes all over the place because he's moving around. Come on, take a step forward. We're gonna let him come up. into the squeeze. We're gonna just open up the head gate just a little bit, see if we can get him to move his way through. Come on, kiddo. And the reason they call it a squeeze is because of this. We can actually make it a little bit smaller to be able to move him up just a little bit, hopefully. Come on, kid. Come on, let's go. Come on. Once we got his head in there, we can just lock him down. Now we can open up the squeeze a little bit. So that we can get in there with him. We got a little bit more room. 
And now we can get in and take a look. Now, we've actually been weaning him. So all this poop and stuff on the back of him is actually from uh, a diarrhea experience that he exper that he had, some diarrhea. So, hey bud, you're okay. So, like I said, he was banded about a month ago. This is actually right in our way. So, we're gonna take our lives in our own hands and move it here. And there, you can see what he's dealing with. Basically, a month ago, and all that is just ready to come off at any time. It is very crusty, it's hard, and nasty. But, it is gonna fall off here before too long, and then Cole will officially be a steer. All right, bud, that's all I'm gonna put you through for today, okay? Okay, so while I've got coal here, I'm gonna show you another thing that I've never shown here on the AeroQuip. And that's uh, basically a quick release uh, feature of this system so that we can, if something happens, we're able to get an animal out very quickly. The whole side of the chute opens right up. So if we have an issue with an animal that we need to get out as quick as possible, we can just open up the side and dump them out this way, which is what we're gonna do with Cole. I don't want him over here with blonde cow, uh, just because obviously she's still nursing. Um, so he would try to nurse off of her. So we wanna make sure that we keep them as separate as possible. So let's go, bud. Come on, which way are you gonna go? You gonna back back out that way? The door is open, buddy. Come on, back up just a little bit. Yeah, turn around, turn around. Come on, back up. There you go, there you go. Look at you go. Ugh, I bonked my head. All right, now we've got Cole out. Meandering around, doing Cole things. We're gonna open up a few more gates and bring Lefty up. Get a check on him. Hey, big kid. that way. Oh look, it's like the Blues Brothers. Hey guys. Come on, let's go. Come on. Turn around, get in that hole. Get in there, there you go, good boy. Keep going. Come on, let's go. Come on, move your butt. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Oh, come on. Let's go. Get up there. There we go. So after the last video, some people actually um, thought that that bull, Lefty, was a trained bull, that he went in way too easy. And uh, unfortunately, I would call Cole more of a trained bull than him. And you can see how much of a pain in the butt Cole is. So I'd rather have a little bit of a wild animal to deal with when going through the corrals just because it is a little bit more instinctual for the way that they move. But he is pretty calm. I'll give him that. Hey buddy, ready to get weighed? Head on in. All right, first of all, Way this big boy. All right, so he is showing 790-ish pounds. Cole, you're not helping. Put him at 800 with our misgivings there on the scale. Cole, don't eat the cords. No, don't eat the cords. Again, we open up our gate in between. Allows him to come in, close it. Now he's in. 
we open up our head chute just a little bit, let him put his head through, and close it. And that's all there is to it. For him, again, we're gonna use this. This is our head grabber, head holder. Move your head just a little bit my way. This will keep him a little bit better of a hold. All right. And like I said before, we're actually doing this for more reasons than just gawking. Um, we want to take a look, make sure that there is no tearing, um, cutting, ripping, exposed flesh, that kind of stuff that we may have to give him antibiotics for. Um, but for the most part, he looks pretty good so far. Come in here, take a look. You can see the amount of shriveling that is happening there, but honestly, it looks like the band broke. Um, the band is no longer there. So this is slightly a problem because we need to get something else back on there. It is completely shriveled. I think that that's still gonna fall off and, and, and be destroyed, but we do need to try to get a new band on there. Things are a lot smaller now than they were last time, which will hopefully make things just a little bit easier. All right, luckily I did bring over another band. I didn't know that the band had came completely off, but I was planning on putting another band on it anyway, just to help out, but obviously, that band broke, so we are gonna replace it with another band and hopefully um, be able to take care of the problem. So the damage to the testicle is done. Um, I think that that testicle is, is, is toast. So we are going to basically um, just give ourselves a little insurance policy here and get another band on, hopefully. And hopefully this doesn't hurt him too much. Oh man, it's like rock hard now. <sighs> it's so crusty. Oh, and gross. Ick. Oozy. I'm sure it doesn't feel great, buddy. But we're gonna get this done, okay? So we do have a little bit of oozing happening. A little grossness. back to two weeks ago trying to get a band on this stupid thing. <clears throat> it is a lot easier this time, trust me. <sighs> okay. So, ugh. Oh, it stinks too. It's dead flesh. I mean, it's rotten. And it's gonna fall off anyway. All right. I think that is about as good as we're gonna get it this time. But we've got it on there again. Everything's gonna stay. And continue the process of coming off. Very gross. Yuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, with the way that this is going, I think I am going to give him a quick dose of antibiotics. And, uh, and then we'll send him back on his way. All right, so today for antibiotics uh, for him, we're actually gonna use LA-200, and that's because he's here in captivity where we can um, keep an eye on him here in the corrals. If he was out on pasture, we'd probably end up using Exceed, which is a long course antibiotics. This will actually take more doses, um, but it's a little bit cheaper and hopefully we'll do the trick for him. Um, Exceed is a five or seven day uh, course of antibiotics. So you just give him one shot and then you're able to turn him loose. But be sure to talk to your vet before any medical procedure on any livestock. Alrighty, so quick shot for him.
there we go. And we're all done there. And we're all done there. So he can't go out yet. He's gonna stay with us for a little while longer. We're gonna keep an eye on this and make sure that everything's working okay. Um, obviously, it's the, using the band way less intrusive than, than cutting open uh, the scrotum. There's a lot less chance for bleeding. Um, at this point, with his age, I mean, doing a, a, a castration with a knife would almost be like surgery. There's, there's things that need to be carterized. There's, there's arteries, there's all kinds of stuff that could cause all kinds of trouble. So. Doing it this way, a lot safer, a lot better for him, even though he did snap that band and, and we're gonna end up, you know, that we kinda, we're not starting over because I think a lot of the damage was done over the last two weeks to that testicle. I don't think it's coming back, that's for sure. Uh, but now we just need to make sure that everything falls off in a relatively safe and hygienic manner, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna get him out of here and back over with Blonde Cow and get Cole uh, put back into his spot. And that's pretty much it, we'll be done. He's back in there with Blonde Cow. They seem relatively happy. Hi guys. Okay, come on Cole, let's go. So I guess Cole wants to go see everybody today. So we're gonna take him for a little tour. Come on, Cole. More chickens. Hey, Cole. Cole, you wanna meet a pig? Cool. Apparently pigs aren't cool enough for him. All right, hey, come up this way. Come on, get back in your house. There you go, come on. Good job. And we're right back where we started. <laughs> Another successful morning on the ranch, I hope. Um, the bowl over there. things should fall off correctly. As for Cole, he seems to be doing great. And uh, we move on to the very next thing. Be sure to join us on Sunday for our weekly vlog. That'll be coming out on Sunday for you. You get to take a look back at the entire week on the ranch, everything that you might've missed in regular videos. And I hope you enjoyed the update on old Lefty the Bull over there and soon to be nutless. I guess will be his new name. Thanks guys. Be sure to subscribe, follow along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. And we'll see you on Sunday. Bye guys.